So in this tutorial, I'll walk through how to make this really simple dragon wing rig, including tricks and tips for modeling the wing, using cloth simulation to create realistic deformations, and creating a custom rig from scratch with controls for easy posing and animating. You'll get the most out of this tutorial if you're familiar with Blender. I'll be switching a lot between object, edit, sculpt, and pose mode. And I've activated tab for pie menu and pie menu on drag to quickly switch between them. With that said, let's get started. First, let's add a reference image to the scene with Shift A, Image Reference. I'm using one I've made for this tutorial, which I'll share a link to in the description. I've outlined the shape of a simple bat wing and marked where I think the bone joint should go. To start modeling the main wing shape, we'll add a mesh plane to the scene with Shift A, Mesh Plane, and position it along this outside edge. To see better, we can change the reference image to display in front in the properties panel and also dial in the opacity just to suit your preference. I'll switch into edit mode and we can start extruding the edges of the plane and moving the vertices around to start tracing the silhouette of the wing. Here I'm using the tweak tool so I can easily click and drag things around and I'm switching between vertex and edge select using one and two on the keyboard. Start by lining up the main joints before adding extra edge loops with Control R and continuing to trace the silhouette. Gradually adding more geometry as you need it. For good deformations later on, try and keep the faces as square as possible. And there's, there's room for error here, so, so try your best, but don't stress too much. As we add more edge loops and the mesh becomes denser, we can switch into sculpt mode, turning on wireframe in our overlay settings and instead use the grab brush to start moving things around and keep everything lined up with the reference. You can find the grab brush in the asset shelf at the bottom of the viewport or shift space will bring up the brush library or just use the default hotkey, which is G. To adjust the size of a brush, hit F and drag with the mouse or shift F to adjust the strength. For fine tuning, I like to use the Relax Slide brush, which slides vertices along the edge they're already on, but it can be a bit aggressive, so I tend to use it at lower strengths to make it more manageable. If you hold Shift while using it, you can relax the faces to create more even topology. We'll need more geometry than this for a good cloth sim, so back in edit mode, select everything with A, right click and subdivide. You can adjust the amount of subdivisions in the bottom left, but one level is plenty for now. Then back into sculpt mode for the last bit of finessing with the grab brush. To create the arm, we can duplicate all the edges that follow the bone in our reference, so the top edge and the three finger bones. Duplicate with Shift D and P to separate that selection. Let's select each one and rename them with F2. I'll call these inner wing and arm. Now with the arm selected, we can apply a skin modifier to create some actual geometry. To adjust the size, tap into edit mode and select all the vertices and use Control A to scale down by dragging on the mouse to set a, a good base thickness. We can ignore the mess that's happening at the top of the arm, we'll fix that later. Next I want to taper each finger down to a point, so I'll select all the end vertices and activate proportional editing set to connected only. Playing with the influence by scrolling on the mouse wheel will give more or less of a taper and I'll use the same technique to add volume around the finger joints, the arm and the shoulder. To round off the shoulder, I'll extrude out an extra vertex and scale that down with a really low influence. Now we're ready to fix the issue we're seeing at the top of the hand. To do that, we can switch into x-ray mode and look for any unnecessary vertices that are causing that crowding. There are a bunch here left over from the extra faces we added to the wing mesh. So select all of those and hit X and dissolve the vertices to remove them. To fix the weird intersections, I find the best approach is just to find the closest vertex that a problem and drag it around until the mesh corrects itself. We can't always get this perfect. So the aim is to create the easiest topology to clean up. Now we can apply the skin modifier to create real geometry to work with. I'll remove this extra set of faces by merging the vertices either side with M, merge at center, and then shift R just to repeat the last operation. To make any final adjustments, I find top view works best with X-ray mode enabled to make sure I'm selecting the vertices on both sides of the mesh. Once everything is lined up, we'll add more geometry with a subdivision modifier and one level of subdivision. 
We can apply that to permanently create new faces. Then add another subdivision modifier on top that will keep in the modifier stack. And we can get rid of this banding by going to object and shading smooth. To create a more organic and irregular look to the model, we can jump back into sculpt mode and use the inflate brush to add the last bit of definition to the, the arm. Here I'm just adding volume in places that I think make sense. Around the top of the hand, adding a bit more volume around the forearm and creating definition around the finger joints. Once we're happy with that, we can start creating the armature. Let's add a single bone to the scene with shift A, armature, single bone. We'll rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees and in top view, we can position it to start at the bottom corner of the wing. Under armature properties in viewport display, we'll set the armature to display in front, just like our reference image. In edit mode, we can grab the head of the bone and line it up with the shoulder joint. Hitting E lets us extrude new bones to create the upper arm and forearm. Select each bone and hit F2 to rename them. I'm going to call this spine, upper arm and forearm. We'll create separate chains of bones for these fingers by duplicating the spine and rotating it to face down towards the fingertips. It's kind of hard to see the arm below the armature, so we can change its display type in armature properties to stick. We want to line up the tail so the bones rotate where the fingers connect to the hand and then extrude along each joint towards the fingertip. Do the same for the other two fingers before renaming them. This time we'll select all the bones in the chain and hit Ctrl F2 for the batch rename tool. Set it to bones, new, and just pick a memorable name. I've gone with wing pinky, wing middle, and wing index. Now we can test the armature by switching into pose mode and moving the bones around. Here I've forgotten to parent the fingers to the arm, so I can fix that by going back into edit mode, selecting the root bone of each finger chain, then the upper arm, and control P to parent. I want to keep the current offset position, so I'll select keep offset. Okay, so next we're ready to attach our mesh to the armature. We can do that by shift selecting both of them, then the armature, and using control P to bring up the parent menu. Picking automatic weight will simultaneously parent our meshes to the armature, apply an armature modifier, create vertex groups for each bone, and then do its best to automatically weight paint the mesh. This actually looks pretty good, but if you do want to adjust any of the weights, back in object mode, select the armature, then the mesh, and switch into weight paint mode. Now if you shift control click a bone, that will make it active, and you can go in and manually weight paint the influence. So we're getting some issues at extreme angles. The first thing to do is to make sure the subdivision modifier has been applied after the armature, and that's so we're deforming the original mesh. Next, we can add a smooth corrective modifier to smooth out some of the more extreme deformations. By default, this looks fine, but you can always play with the factor and the iterations depending on your model. With that looking good, we're now ready for the cloth simulation. So in object mode, we'll select the wing mesh and add a cloth modifier under the physics tab. If we hit play now, the cloth has nothing to interact with, so just falls into infinity. And if we scroll through the timeline, we can actually see the simulation has been cached and that's represented by this blue bar that sits at the bottom. This is set to 250 frames by default. So if you want a longer simulation, you'll need to increase that in the cache section of the cloth properties. To keep it attached to the armature as it moves, we need to create a pin group. So in edit mode, select all the edges that follow our main arm bones and create a new vertex group in the data tab of the properties panel and assign all of the selected vertices. Back in the cloth properties, we can scroll down to the shape section and under pin group, select the new vertex group we just created. Because the same vertices in our pin group have also been weighted to the armature, if we hit play and move it in pose mode, our cloth follows the rig as it moves. It's quite low poly, so let's fix that by adding a subdivision modifier. We can reset the bone rotations in pose mode with control R and the simulation cache by going to frame one. We can fix the rounded corners by selecting all the edges along the bones in edit mode and setting that edge crease to 1. Then back to object mode to apply smooth shading from the object menu. 
it's a little loose for a dragon wing. So if we go back to the shape tab, we can play with the shrinking value to create tension along our pin group. And now we're feeling a lot more realistic. Right now, we've technically rigged a wing, but it's super fiddly to adjust each bone individually. So let's add some controls to make it easier to pose. To easily position all three fingers together, let's go back into edit mode and parent the outside fingers to the middle finger. Just make sure you're selecting the root of each chain. Control P and keep offset. And we now have control over the angle of the fingers with a single bone. Next, I want to create a bone to control the curving of the wing. So in edit mode again, let's add a brand new bone by duplicating the middle finger with shift D and scaling it down slightly just to make it easier to see. If you're finding it scaling around the middle, just make sure your pivot point is set to the individual origins. Let's rename it with F2. I'm going to call this control roll target. So the idea is to use a constraint. So each bone along the fingers copy the rotation of our new control bone. And because each bone is connected to another, as it applies the same rotation, we start to get this, this curve shape. So in pose mode, start by selecting the target bone. This is the new bone we've created that's going to influence the rest. Then select the bone that you want to apply the constraint to. We'll start with the top middle bone first. Control shift C will bring up the add constraint menu. And you can also get that from the top navigation bar under pose, constraints, and add. If we select copy rotation, we can see the finger bone has turned green. And that indicates it's got a constraint on it. And a copy rotation has been added under the bone constraints tab with our control bone set as the target. We only need to copy the up and down rotation. And so the axis we want is X. So we'll uncheck everything else in the constraint settings. Also, we only want to rotate around the local coordinates of each bone. So we can switch from world space to local space. And as we only want the X rotation of our control bone, we can lock the other axes by expanding the sidebar and locking all the rotation channels except for X. Now to copy this constraint to our other bones, select the last two bones in each chain, selecting the newly constrained bone last. Then from the pose menu, go down to constraints and select copy constraints to selected bones. And there we go. We've simplified our rig to a handful of controls. Let's add some custom bone shapes to make it super easy to use. First, we'll need a selection of meshes to use as our custom bone shapes. I'll just be using a circle, a rectangle, and a sphere with most of the edges removed. F2 again to name them something memorable. I like to use the widget prefix to make them easier to find. Back in pose mode, we can pick one of our bones to customize. And in the bone properties, under viewport display, we can set the color and pick one of our custom shapes. I like to uncheck scale to bone length, set my wire width to around two, and play with the position and scale depending on the rig. For this, I'll set the main arm bones about halfway up, finger bones at the very end, and you can also use the rotation and scale to fine tune how they look. To wrap up, let's hide the bones that we don't need. We'll do that by creating a new bone collection in the armature properties tab called control. If we select all our main control bones, and assign that to this new collection, hide our existing collection, and our rig is done. And it's really as simple as that. Once you've done this a couple of times, it's really quick to make, and it's even more fun to play with. If you like this tutorial, please let me know in the comments. I always try to read them and reply. Otherwise, see you next time.